glad we're doing good. So what are squirrels? Boys and squirrels, absolutely. Yeah, ladies and germs, boys and squirrels. There you go. We are talking today about motion, um, and you took some notes over 4A, and we're going to reinforce that and go a little bit further with some terms of how to measure motion, how to talk about motion. So I'll give you a moment to write this down, and then we will get going. When we measure motion, we're talking about things moving. We always have to have a point of reference of motion. You have to say it's moving with regard to some other position. Um, otherwise, it, motion is hard to measure, motion is hard to notice. For example, right now, I don't look like I'm moving because my, my relative motion to you is not changing. But you and I both are on the surface of a plane that is spinning at thousands and thousands of miles an hour. But that motion is impossible to perceive because we are all spinning at the same rate. And that planet is traveling through the solar system at a ridiculously fast speed. But we can't see that, we can't perceive that, because all of our points of reference are moving at the same speed. But if I were all of a sudden to stand truly still and be at the same point in the universe and not be moving at all anymore, I would like go crashing through that wall because the planet is spinning and if I all of a sudden stopped moving, then you'd know. But motion is always with regard to a point of reference. So if you're in a car, it feels like you're not moving because the car is moving with you, right? But somebody standing on a sidewalk would notice you passing by and notice your motion, even though you might not be aware of your motion so much in the car. So motion is always measured from a point of reference. We have to pick some point that's fixed in space and say, if you stand here, you can see that this is moving, right? A flea on a dog isn't aware that the dog is moving all that much because the skin and the hair that it's hanging on to is also moving. But if the flea were to jump off of the dog and the dog were to keep walking away, then it would go, oh, look, the dog was moving, right? So motion is always referenced from some fixed point. Uh, motion is also, also measured within a time interval. We always say something is moving a certain distance in a certain amount of time. You're used to things like miles per hour in your car, your parents' car, or you might, if you're into archery, you might be uh, aware of measurements like per second or something like that. And we always talk about a distance and a unit of time when we talk about uh, motion. So time is always important. We measure time from the time something starts moving, the initial time, to the time it's done moving, the final time. And we like to write T sub I, meaning initial. Sometimes it's T sub 1 for like the first time. And then T sub F is the final time, or you could say T sub 2, like beginning and ending of time. And then there's this cool symbol. And it may be the first time you've seen delta in an expression. Does it, has anybody seen delta something in a class before? This is the capital Greek letter D, delta, right? Um, and when we use that in the sciences, it means change in something. So you could have delta anything, and what you mean is the change in that variable that follows it. In this case, delta t means the change in time. So this little symbol means however long the elapsed time is, right? Uh, yesterday I ran home from school, and I left here right after the kids left, because my wife called and said that she was ill and needed me home. So I chased the kids out of here at 3.15, and I started running about 3.18. Uh, and I got home at 3.40. So it took me 22 minutes to run home. So delta T was 22 minutes, right? The change in time from the time I left to the time I got home, all right? So delta in something means the change in that thing. There are two ways to measure how far motion goes. You can talk about how far something travels and care about its pathway, or you can care, you can talk about how far something goes and not care about its pathway. Example, when I ran home yesterday, I left this room, I ran out down the hallway, downstairs, and uh, down in front of the office, across the parking lot, down and up the green hill behind those condominiums, got to, got to Ka'ahumanu, 
ran down the hill, hit Cam Highway, ran a little bit on Cam Highway, turned left on my street, and ran down the house. That's the pathway I traveled. If you measure the actual pathway, it's 1.4 miles. Okay? But that's distance. But if you were to do in a physics problem, how, uh, you know, and measure how far I ran, physics doesn't really care about pathway as much as it cares about displacement. And all that matters is the difference in location from my starting place to my ending place. So if you were to look at Google Maps and put my little route on Google Maps, it would tell you 1.4 miles. But then if you were to look at Google Earth and drop a pin on the school and drop a pin on my house and have it measure in a straight line, not caring about roads, you'd find that it's only 0.93 miles. 0.93 miles would be my displacement because it's a straight line measurement from where I began to where I ended. And it doesn't care about the pathway. The pathway can go wherever it wants to. Displacement measures the difference in location, difference in position. And we use another delta symbol for this. We use delta x. x means location or position. x marks the spot, right? And so this is change in location or change in position. So um, any of these, anytime you move, if you measure the actual path where the object took, that's distance. If you measure the change in location from where it began to where it ended, that's displacement. Here's kind of a depressing thought. This morning, you woke up in your bed. I'm going to make the assumption. You woke up in your bed. And then you get out of bed, and you go about your day. You come to school, and you go to class to class, and maybe you go to sports after school, or maybe you have something else to do after school. And then you finally make it home, and you feel like, man, I've done so much. Look at all I've done today. Look at all the places I've gone. But as soon as you crawl back in your bed, if you were to think about your displacement for the day, you started in your bed, you ended in your bed. According to physics, you went nowhere, right? Your change in position is zero. So if you started in the same place, your displacement is zero. Even though you might have a lot of distance covered, the displacement would be zero if you started in the same location. Okay? So that's a, a concept you need to keep straight uh, as we talk about motion. So just an example of this, if you set the mouse on this little course and the, you put some cheese over here and you ask the mouse to find the cheese, the mouse may wander all over the place before he finds the cheese. And the distance would be this, you know, pathway with the black arrows. But his displacement would just be the straight line between the starting point and the ending point, right? So that's distance versus displacement. Okay. So if you take a measurement of motion, um, we usually care which direction the motion is in. And so oftentimes those measurements are called vectors because it's not just how far did you go, but which direction did you travel. Not all measurements are like that. For example, if I were to ask how much does this water bottle weigh, it weighs, oh, and I'm going to have to guess. It weighs probably, how many ounces is this? Um, it weighs about half. Say about half a pound. Okay, so um, roughly, uh, yeah, roughly, roughly a quarter of a kilogram. Yeah, a quarter of a kilo is about right. So, but that measurement is not going anywhere. This is unless I drop it. But this is uh, this is just a mass measurement, right? Similarly, if I were to ask what's the pressure of air inside here, as I squeeze on the bottle, the pressure is just the pressure. It's not going anywhere. It's not directional. It's just the pressure. If I were to ask, how loud am I talking? That's a certain number of decibels, right? And that measurement doesn't go anywhere. All of those are scalar measurements, measurement without a direction. But if I ask, how fast does the water bottle fall? Okay, now I have a measurement of acceleration, measurement of speed, and it's going somewhere. It's got a, a speed in a direction. Now it matters, right? If I ask how loud am I talking, that's a scalar measurement. But if I were somehow to measure the speed of sound coming out of my mouth, now I'm looking at how fast is it going in a particular direction. That's a vector. Measurements with direction are vectors. Measurements without director, direction are called scalars. Okay? So there's lots and lots of possible examples that we could go through. Um, but going back to the mouse and the cheese, right? Distance is scalar. Distance doesn't care about direction. You can measure the same distance even though the direction is changing. This is a scalar measurement of distance. But 
Displacement is a vector. The mouse going to the cheese is one direction, straight line. So that would be a vector measurement. Distance is a scalar measurement. Okay, so those are just two terms to keep in mind as we are talking about these. So we're going to talk about some different ways to measure motion. And um, some terminology is going to be scalar and some terminology is going to be vector. So speed is scalar. The speedometer on your car measures speed. That's why it's called a speedometer, right? Speedometer. Um, and the speedometer just tells you how fast you're going at that moment. But it doesn't tell you which direction you're going, right? It doesn't say you're going 45 miles an hour north or 45 miles an hour south. You may have a compass in your car that tells you that somewhere else. But the speedometer itself is just speed. So it doesn't know what direction you're going, and it frankly doesn't care, right? It just wants to know how fast you're going. Speed is a scalar measurement. It can be any direction. It can change direction. Right? <clears throat> so you can have a speedometer and you're going, you know, 12 miles an hour. And then you turn and you're still going 12 miles an hour. Right? And now I'm going 12 miles an hour over here and 12 miles an hour over here. And I change direction all the time and I'm still going 12 miles an hour. Speed is scalar. Speed doesn't care what direction you're going. You can have an instantaneous speed and then we use a V with a little I N S T, instantaneous. Or you can have an average speed, and we use a little b with a, b, g. You could also have a little b with a bar over it. That's another symbol for it. But average velocity um, is often a, b, g. Okay, so we use v. Why do we use v? I don't know. I wish I knew why we used v for speed. We also use v for velocity, which is a different measure. But the difference is the, the velocity v is capital, and the lower and the speed one is lowercase. I wish they had a different letter. It would make me happier, but nobody has to. So V, instantaneous, <coughs> V, average. If it's a lowercase V, we're talking about speed. Speed is calculated by the amount of distance that you travel in a certain amount of time. You're used to that, miles per hour, kilometers an hour, meters per second, feet per second. Um, and so some kind of distance divided by some time interval. Um, so we could say lowercase v equals d over delta t, distance over change in time. Does that understand us any questions so far? Okay. Now we're going to get to speed's friend, velocity. So speed is a scalar measurement. Direction doesn't matter. Velocity is a vector measurement. Direction matters. Now we care which way you're going. You don't have a velocity meter in your car. If you did, then on the same display, it would not only give you rate of speed, but the direction you're going. So if it told you 65 miles an hour at 270 degrees heading, if it gave you all that data at one time, it might be a velocity meter, right? Velocity cares about direction. Velocity also uses displacement, never distance which makes it a little bit more complicated to work with. Because displacement, remember, is a straight line measurement from where I began to where I ended. Not about pathway. So because of that, you can never at one point in time know my velocity right now. Because I don't know my displacement right now. I know maybe my pathway where I wander, but I would have to take a measurement from where I am versus where I began and get that displacement before I can calculate my velocity, okay? That, for that reason, velocity is never instantaneous. We don't have instantaneous velocity. We always have average velocity because you need to know for the whole movement, where did it start? Where did it end? How much displacement did, did it produce in what amount of time, okay? So velocity change in position over change in time, uh, delta x over delta t. And we always use the uppercase v for velocity. Again, that kind of bugs me. I wish they had a better system because it's hard to tell in your handwriting. Is that a lowercase v or a capital V? Unless you like really make the capital V's huge, you know, little v's, itsy bitsy. Um, because average, you know, the, the shape of the v doesn't change. It's not like a d or, a, or an f or something where the shape is different. So 
Sorry about that. Keep them straight. Little v's, speed. Big v's, velocity. Velocity is the change in position over the change in time. So going back to my having run home yesterday, if I covered 1.4 miles in 22 minutes, you could do that division and you'd know my speed, which was probably pretty slow because my daughter was running. Um, but if you wanted to know my velocity, then you'd have to take that same 22 minutes and divide it by the straight line path, which is 0.93 miles. 0.93 miles divided by 22 minutes is even sadder. Um, but that's what happens with velocity, is it doesn't care how you got there, just where you changed your position. Okay. Make your daughter know. Mm -hmm. So as we're doing this, there's no such thing as a negative speed. You, you can go backwards at a particular speed, but it's not a negative speed. Speed doesn't care about direction. And so wherever you're going, it's a positive number. Distance is always positive. Speed is always positive. You can't have negative distance. You can't have negative speed. But you can have negative displacement, which means you can have negative velocity. So if I'm talking about a particular system of reference where the intersection of these tiles is zero, and that's positive. When I go over here, I've gone positive four tiles, okay? And I can figure out how fast I travel, positive four tiles in this direction. But now let's say I go back to where I started. Now I'm at four, and I go backwards to zero. Well, that is negative displacement because I've decided that this is zero and that's positive. I could keep going negative. I could go backwards to negative two, right? And now I've had negative displacement. Because direction matters, because displacement is a vector with a direction, then I can have positive displacement or negative displacement. And because velocity is displacement divided by time, my top number can change, can be positive or negative, which means my answer can be positive or negative. You can have positive velocity, you can have negative velocity. So again, going back to the story of me running home yesterday, if we decided that my classroom was the origin and my house, the closer I got to my house, it was a positive number, right? As I'm running home, my velocity is positive, my displacement is positive, but then when I run back to school the next morning, I'm going negative because that's positive. This is zero. I'm coming closer to zero, right? So depending on which direction you're going, because direction matters, velocity and displacement can be negative numbers. Uh, speed and distance cannot. They're always positive. Okay? So just as an example here, if everybody on the freeway is going this way and you're not, <laughs> You're in trouble, right? Um, but this, this person is experiencing negative velocity with regard to everybody else's point of view, and pretty soon he's going to experience boo-boo velocity um, because you don't want to drive the wrong direction on the freeway. Is this a real picture? That's a real picture. Oh. Did they clash? Uh, I'm sure that they did. That's, that doesn't end well, generally speaking. Traffic over here. And he's like, I'll just drive over here. Uh -huh. yeah. No, H1 pulls that off, but they got the big buffer like that. So um, distance and speed, never positive, or never negative. Displacement and velocity can be. Okay, negative velocity, big problem. Let's do some problems. Calculating average speed. It takes a Tour de France cyclist 0.86 hours, which would be 51.6 minutes, to cover a 41.5 kilometer stage. What is his average speed? in kilometers per hour. So notice we don't know what direction, and we're talking about a distance here because the Tour de France curves all over the place, right? Time interval delta T is 0.86 hours. The distance is 41.5 kilometers. We're looking for average speed. So distance is, I'm sorry, average speed is distance divided by unit of time. Put our numbers in, and we get 48 kilometers an hour, okay? <coughs> Notice they only gave you two digits, two significant digits in the answer. 
uh, because we have two significant digits here. We have three here, but we have to pick the least precise number. Okay. So that's an example. Do you guys understand how you would calculate speed, average speed? You okay with that? Sweet, Marty. Already, acceleration. This gets a little bit more fun. Okay, last new concept of the day. Acceleration is the change in speed. It could also be the change in velocity. You can use it for both. Over a time interval. So here we have delta v, right? Change, change in speed, or it could be the change in velocity. And that that unit to get the change in speed or the change in velocity, we would need to subtract the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So you're driving on the freeway. You're not driving, that would be scary. Your mom is driving on the freeway. You're riding with your mom. And you get stuck on the freeway behind somebody that drives with too much aloha. They're just like way hanging loose, right? They're on the freeway, they're doing, they're doing 45 miles an hour. And it's the one place in the freeway where it's not 45, it's like 60 miles an hour. And they're still doing 45. And you're like, hey, bro, we need to get to school, eh? And the guy's just like, mm. so your mom pulls out behind him and steps on the accelerator. The car speeds up. And you were behind the guy going 45. You slide over, your mom steps on the gas, now you're doing 60, speed limit, good for you. That change in velocity from 45 miles an hour to 60 miles an hour is delta V, right? Uh, 60 miles an hour, you subtract the final minus the initial to get the change. In this case, that would be a positive 15, 25 miles an hour, right? Um, and then you divide that by how long it took to make that change. How many seconds did it take to go from 45 to 60? And so uh, let's say that that took your car one and a half seconds to go from 45 to 60. That's a change in 15 miles an hour in one and a half seconds. You would need to make sure you're all in the same unit, but you can just divide and calculate a value for A, for acceleration. How, how rapidly did your speed change? And we express that in, it's usually in meters per second squared. Meters over S squared. The reason being, velocity is usually measured in meters per second. So this is meters per second minus meters per second is going to give you something meters per second. Divided by another number of seconds. Meters divided by seconds divided by seconds again. So it's usually expressed in a unit called meters per second squared. Okay? And it's how rapidly is your speed changing. So let's look at that in an example problem here. A car moving at five meters per second. Oh, notice positive five meters per second. So this is a velocity that gave us a direction in the positive direction. Smoothly accelerates to 20 meters per second in five seconds. Calculate the car's acceleration. North is positive. So they're evidently driving north. Okay. And the car's initial velocity, so that's V sub I, is 5 meters per second. The final velocity, V sub F, is 20 meters per second. It took them 5 seconds to accelerate that amount. What is the average acceleration? Acceleration, final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. Okay. Here I have 20 minus 5 divided by 5. That's 15 divided by 5. The answer is three. Three meters per second per second, or three meters per second squared. Did you follow that? Okay. Anybody confused by what we did? Okay. That's the kind of stuff you're going to be meeting and playing with in this chapter, uh, and we will have some practice with that in the next couple of days. So, any questions at all over this stuff? You guys are good? Barbie.